Mm-hmm. How's your summer treating you? Awesome, man. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, um, you know, I, I, I'm having one, which sometimes How about is, that? it's hard to do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to rub it in anybody's face and it, like sports media is a grind, man. Like we get to do a lot of cool stuff, but you don't get a lot of time off for various reasons. But, um, I've been on a couple trips. Mm-hmm. I've worked a lot less than I did during football season. Like this is probably the most ready that I've ever been for football season. Oh, really? I'm, sh- I'm sure okay. you've just been ruminating on camp battles, right? Let's go. <laughs> not, Let's not, get not, into it. I'm to be honest, I'm getting bored to be honest with you. So, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Is wow. this, is this, we were actually talking about this. Was it yesterday? Or one of the last few times that we've been sitting in studio together. This might be the quietest, mm-hmm. most humdrum Cowboys offseason totally. that I can remember in a long time. And let's knock on some wood or something That's right, right. Exactly. i'm not asking i'm not asking for somebody to go to jail or get suspended like i don't want that kind of drama but like it's been really quiet man they they swung a couple trades in the spring the draft happened i mean shoot the draft was almost three months ago at this point mm-hmm. and you know unless you get super excited for kicker news there hasn't been a whole <laughs> lot else to talk about so like i said i mean i unplugged for like two solid weeks I've been, you know, I, I traveled around the country a little bit. I went to Omaha for the College World Series. We'll get into some of that a little bit later See on. See my sure. boys win the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So, like, like I said, like, sometimes when you're beat reporting, and I get, I mean, first world problems, I get it. But, like, you go straight from the draft into the rookies and then OTAs and mini camp, and you cover all that stuff. And by the time, by the time you're done dealing with everything from that, it's late June. And you're like, oh my god! Like we'll be at camp in yeah, three camp and a half right weeks. Corner, yeah. Uh, whereas this year, I was I was a little bit more intentional about shutting it down, um, which has been really nice. So yeah, like I feel, I feel rested and ready to care way too much about football. Now, obviously, you're a big TV star. Now I know you don't enjoy right. it when I say it, and that's why I say it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, will you, with your you know TV schedule, be able to take in a little bit of camp this year as opposed to last year? You know, a lot of what my fall is going to look like is still up in the air. Sure. Um, I I believe I will be out in California, but I don't I don't a hundred percent know the whole plan. Uh, so I'm I've got a few irons in the fire is the better way of saying that. But um, I I won't be start to finish at training camp. I sure. don't think unless something crazy happens. Clearly, the reason why I asked was because I wanted to know if we were going to have to de- depend exclusively on John Machado's video. There's a reason. <laughs> I tweeted about that this morning, and there's a reason I worded it the way I did, where I was like, you know, it's we're all going to be watching John's feed because That's right. I don't, I don't know this for sure. It could still change, and I'll be the first to let you know if it does. But I think, I think it's going to be on Johnny matches uh, this year to really be that guy. So I know he's up to the challenge, though. Oh, he's always got great footage. I mean, with all due respect to Clarence Hill and uh, Calvin Watkins. Uh, their videos, you know, the clarity at times from both of them is it's, not it's, it's not great. It's a generational thing. Yeah, I was about to say, are we are we are we doing the ages of right now? <laughs> it's not even. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna be mean. Like there's a, there's just a difference between people who have like had a phone in their hands for most of their life <laughs> versus people who are like still figuring out how it works. And I love Clarence and Calvin. I love Calvin. I love Clarence too. Boy. Uh, I w- no, actually, but I mean, shoot, but like. I mean, it's been 10 years since I started covering the team. Like, there's new, there's new younger faces covering the Cowboys. Like, I would imagine Patrick Walker's a guy that comes to mind who, mm-hmm. who I'm sure will have his finger on the pulse. Um, my buddy from, from Dallas Cowboys, uh, Kyle Yeomans, is a guy who typically can be relied on for some videos and things like that. I'm sure there's some other people. So, uh, but I mean, shoot, John, John. I told you the king of this. John was I hated to admit this because like I prided myself on it, but I was like, man, your stuff's better than mine. I can't even front. Can't <laughs> was it like lie. just a general recognition? Like, all right, John, you got like, it. His his framing was always better. He like he never missed anything. Or I don't know why I'm talking in the past tense. It's gonna be that way. Next also, month, how is too. he always in the right spot? He, every time. Happen? Dude, it's it's that's what I'm saying. It's like sometimes I'll shoot a couple things, I'll get a good video, and then I'll get distracted or I'll be like I'm like yeah 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 that's cool whatever CD Lamb's doing but like I want to I want to watch one-on-ones between the O-line and D-line so like I'll go off and do my thing and then (laughs) 
15 minutes later, I hear the crowd erupt, and I'm like, damn it. Like, Mashoda got it. Yeah, I'm it. like, CD just <laughs> posterized somebody, and Mashoda definitely got it. Uh, uh, he's just He's got a knack for it. Text line, obviously, loving the fact that you're in with this David Hellman of Fox Sports mm -hmm. right here on the Get Right. Um, and asked, because you were talking about, you know, this particularly unique summer for you, at least when it comes to your tenure covering the Cowboys. And they asked, is this, are you in the best shape of your life? Because that's what it sounds like. You're, you're living into, your you're playing season. into that show. Dude, that's that show. Right. Uh, Do we have to be concerned about you come uh, regular season? <laughs> I might, I'm in, I'll, I'm in terrible shape. Right <laughs> no, what's so funny is like. I was out there in LA doing the Cali thing. Like, I don't have a ton of friends out there. Your kombucha juice and everything. I was drinking kombucha. I was uh -huh. like, I had a trainer. I was uh -huh. working out. A tra that's Dude, TV I, stuff. I had a trainer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Woo. I had a trainer. Shout out, shout out, Anthony. That's my guy. Uh, <laughs> but like, I came back here and A, he he's not here, so I don't have that. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I went to Antigua on vacation. Ooh. Oh, you was kicking. That's I went to fantastic. the College World Series. I went to Chicago for a little while. Like, I've not been home a lot. Yeah. And I'm and obviously like eating and drinking and all the stuff that you do on vacation. I actually I work I've been working out this week for the first time in a, a month or more. Been whooping your ass as I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like my arms are dead right now after doing like a very basic workout. I'm not happy about it. David Hellman of Fox Sports joining us in studio here. Tell me what's your state of the Cowboys as we get ready. We're just two weeks away from training camp. What is your state of the Dallas Cowboys right now? I think the Cowboys are in as good of a position as they've been in at least since Mike McCarthy took the job. The state of the Cowboys is strong. It is. It feels really strong. Yeah. And it's, it's ironic because we were talking about a quiet summer. If you remember last year, it was anything but. It was a nightmare on a variety of levels. Mm -hmm. Um and the funny thing is, like, I went into last season, I had a bad feeling last season because I was like, this team is allergic to its own success. Every time they have a good year, every time they get to the playoffs, they kind of smell themselves a little bit. There's a bunch of controversies. And so at this time last year, I was like, it's it's like clockwork, man. Like they can't stay out of the news. Nothing's going right. And they're going to have a letdown. And lo and behold, they go 12 and 5 again. Or yeah, they went 12, yeah, 12 and 5. Yeah, yeah. So they win 12 games again. They win a playoff game. So they arguably had a better season, even though they didn't win the division. Since Tom Brady's to retirement. So it really it kind of shut me up in the sense of like, okay, like I've got to give Mike McCarthy the credit of sustaining success in a way that Jason Garrett was not able to do. And so now I look at it, I'm like, yeah, man, this is this is the mark of a successful team. And I, I get it. We know they've got to get to a Super Bowl. They all that good stuff. But in the meantime, the thing that Jason Garrett was never able to do that I think would be the mark of success for McCarthy is just year in and year out, 10 plus wins, always in the playoffs the way that Green Bay was. And so I'm just like, yeah, man, they look better on paper than a team that won 12 games. Uh, they're in a weak conference, a strong division, but a mm -hmm. weak conference like you know, I don't know if they'll win 12 again, but I have every expectation that barring a catastrophe, they'll have a winning record and make the playoffs and we'll get to evaluate them based on whether they can build on that in January. So you, you started down the Mike McCarthy path. And I think the thing that I've been thinking about when we talk about the, the quiet or like the quiet nature of this offseason compared to the last one, one of the big changes is Mike McCarthy taking over the play calling and maybe not changing entirely the offense, but shifting it somewhat to what we're what we've deemed the Texas Coast offense. Who do you think stands to gain the most from Mike McCarthy doing making that change and Mike McCarthy taking over the reins of uh, play calling? That's a really good question. Thanks, I try. Um, who stands to gain? Are, are we talking like purely statistically or like from a like a legacy sort of standpoint? You know, I, wherever you'd like to go, because the, the one that comes to mind for me is like the possibility of someone like Semi Fihoko breaking into oh. the rivers. Yeah, I know. I went deep cut. You like, real, real which is right so off the bat, you're just like, not ready right off the bat, you're like the fourth or fifth yeah, guy on I the was receiver not ready depth for chart. Because I know how much Reds loathe the idea well, of getting fourth and fifth wide receiver conversation. Brother, uh, <laughs> don't, but, but I, no, sincerely. Look, it's, it's the like, all-star break. Kev, exactly. All right? That's right. We, we Content, right? That's Necessary. Right. Content business. But like, just a guy who played in West Coast offense when he was in, in college and we hadn't really heard of him since draft night, basically. You know, that was one of the things I was also trying to leave some of the bigger ones for you if you wanted to expound on that. But uh, no, just any anywhere that you want to go with that, wherever your mind takes you with the idea of who benefits from uh, McCarthy taking over. 
That's a really good question. I would. I mean, I don't want to get into the whole like run the damn ball thing, but actually, I mentioned his name when we were walking in the studio. I mean, and the the legacy stuff is so boring to me because again, like it's all going to be decided by what happens in the postseason anyway. Yeah. Like nothing you do in. The, I mean, that's the funny thing is like it's easy to talk about like Dak, uh, but. Dak has led a top five offense for most of his career, and you still have to push back against the notion that he's even good at his job. So I don't really think Mike McCarthy can do a whole lot for him, in all honesty, at least not until they win playoff games with an S. Uh, but I look at, I mean, Tony Pollard is fascinating mm. to me uh, because mm. the Cowboys have very interestingly done not a lot to fill that depth chart. I mean, I know Ronald Jones is there. I think he carried the ball 17 times last year. I don't think I realized that. My like goodness. He, he really a lot. He did not have much of a season last year. Uh, Malik Davis, I'm a big fan of his. But again, like there's just not a lot there in the in the way of a proven change up. And I don't bring I don't bring this up to say like, oh, can Tony Pollard handle it? I don't care about that. But what does the future hold for Tony Pollard if he is the bell cow in an offense where we know Mike McCarthy wants to run the ball a lot. It's also whatever you want to call it, Tex Coast, West Coast. <laughs> it's a short timing based offense for the most part, based on what we know about McCarthy. I step out on a limb and say Tony Pollard will probably catch more balls this year than he ever has. Interesting. And so you think about being the bell cow runner and a back that can catch a lot of balls. Like Tony Pollard has a chance to really put his name in a place in the NFL hierarchy where it is not right now. And like, it makes some money. Yeah. Oh, and, this is still and a make a boatload That's of right. money. Absolutely. So, like I said, I don't think anything that happens is going to change the way people think from a legacy standpoint about any of the, the primary players. Um, and, you know, having having Brandon Cooks and Michael Gallup, I'm going to assume C.D. Lamb will see a little bit more of a, of a target share sure. than he did last year. But, yeah, I mean, Tony Pollard – really not having much in the way of like a competition for a guy that's going to be on the field taking his touches away. Uh, I think the sky's the limit for him. <laughs>